with GIMP, you can edit photos and images using a single layer, just as you do with many other photo editing programs. But with GIMP, you can also get really creative and use multiple layers and transparencies. Layers are sort of like stacks of photos on a table. When they're all piled up, you can only see the top photo, unless it is smaller than the others, or it has a transparent area on it, or a hole in it. Unfortunately, there isn't enough time to go into great detail here about the many features you can use with layers, but hopefully this video will give you a basic understanding of how layers work and how useful they can be. So let's get started. First, I'll open a photo to work on. Now straight away you should notice that as well as the photo opening in my image window, in the middle, on the right side is my layers panel and there's also a thumbnail print of the photo there. Now the layers panel sort of like an index. While you edit the image itself in the image window, you can select and manipulate the layers in the layers panel. Along the bottom of the layers panel is the button bar. And these buttons allow you to create a new layer, create a new layer group, raise the layer up, lower it, duplicate or copy a layer, anchor a floating layer, or delete a layer. At the moment, I've only got the one layer in my layers panel but I could create many layers when doing a single project. Now if your layers panel doesn't look like this, click on the layers icon tab up the top. So first I'm going to create a new layer to make a frame for my photo. I click on the new layer button and I'm going to rename it Maroon. I'll leave it the default size and I want it to be a transparency so that's fine so I just click OK. Now you can't see the new layer in my image window because it's still transparent but if you look at my layers panel you'll see that I have a new layer and it's named Maroon. GIMP has placed it above the layer I was on and GIMP has automatically selected it the checkerboard pattern indicates that it's transparent. So first I'll colour it. I'll click on the bucket fill tool, come down and change the colour to a maroony type colour and click OK. Then I just click in my image window and my transparent layer is now a maroon colour. Now the photo is still underneath it but you can't see it because, like the pile of photos on the table, this top layer is covering the underneath one. So next, I'll delete an oval from this top layer. I clicked on the ellipse tool and I drag out an oval. And I'll press delete on my keyboard and there you have it. I go select none. Because the maroon layer was transparent originally, when I deleted some of it, it turned transparent again. Just as if I'd cut a hole in a photo. And now I can see some of the photo layer underneath this maroon layer. So now I click on the text tool Choose my font, make the size a bit bigger, and I'll change the colour to black so you can see it. And then I click in the image window where I'd like the text to go. Now 
Now if you look in my layers panel, GIMP automatically put the text onto a new layer. And again, it put it above the layer that I was selected on at the time. And it's now selected the text layer. Now the wonderful thing with the layer is, if I decide I'd like that text on the other side, all I have to do is click on the Move tool, put my cursor into one of the letters and drag the text to where I'd like it to be. Now the perforated rectangle around the text is the layer boundary guide and this only shows up because I have the text layer is selected. It doesn't print if I want to make this into a photo so I leave my layer guides showing. Now you might look at that picture and think maybe it doesn't want the frame at all. All I have to do is go to the layer with the frame and click on the eye and the frame disappears and I can now look at it and think is that better and then click where the eye was again and the frame will come back. It's an easy way to compare You can do that for any layer. I could remove the text and bring it back. Now you can work on any layer, no matter where it is in the stack. So this time I will select the maroon layer and I'll change the colour. I click on the thumbnail image and that selects it. And now I'll click on the Bucket Fill tool. And then I change the colour to maybe a blue. Make sure that Fill Similar Colours is checked. And then click in the maroon. And as you see, the maroon changed to blue. If I don't like it, I can just click on on the edit menu, come down and click on undo bucket fill and it's back to where it was. If I think I might prefer a different colour, perhaps a green, I could do that with a green. And again, I can go edit, undo bucket fill and it'll go back to what it was. If I decide that I don't like the text layer at all, I could click on it to select it and come down to the button bar and press the delete this layer button and you see the text is gone. It's gone here and it's gone from my layer panel. If I've changed my mind I just go edit, undo remove layer and it's back. So by using layers the variations that you can do are only limited by your imagination. And to give you another idea, this card here was made from a photo of a single rose that was copied and put to the side on this layer and then copied again and put to the other side on this layer and then a border was put on on this layer, a ribbon on top of that and the words on top of that. So it's just another idea of what you can do with layers. So I hope that helped a bit. It should become a lot clearer once you start doing your own projects. And if you have any comments or problems, just leave a comment.